Hello, this is Jeff Weiss back with a lecture covering Unit 1. This is a, an overview to horticulture and uh, in, it includes uh, the Week 1 or the Unit 1 assignment and uh, discussion. So once again, welcome to Introduction to Horticulture. I hope that by now you've posted your self-introduction and looked around uh, the Unit O uh, material and feel comfortable with the system. Um, so for the, the uh, Unit 1, um, the discussion post will be due on Wednesday, September 4th, uh, and replies due September 7th. Uh, also, Assignment 1 is due on September 7th, so um, we're going to be developing the we weekly routine uh, that will occur through the rest of this class. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns about that, and I will try to address them. So for this week, the key terms and concepts are going to uh, relate to um, applied plant sciences, uh, which is um, what horticulture is. And we'll get into a little bit of the main divisions of horticulture, although there's no agreement on what those divisions are. It's a little bit arbitrary. And as we go through the class, we'll talk about uh, uh, horticultural specialties and other ways of slicing and dicing the information and the practice of uh, horticulture. And finally, um, the assignment uh, for this week will uh, ask you to get into some uh, uh, career research and planning. Hopefully that will be uh, uh, relevant to you whether or not you plan to uh, uh, prepare for a career in horticulture or improve your the situation that you're in now. So since this um, program is funded by a Department of Labor grant, I wanted to include some uh, uh, career development training and I hope it's helpful. This week's readings, uh, I'd ask you to go back to the course syllabus and become uh, comfortable with the information there. Um, the uh, chapters one and two in Aqua are fairly brief. Um, at least they're easier than the next couple of weeks are going to be with uh, uh, physiology and anatomy. And um, so uh, take, a, take a look at them uh, and uh, prepare for the densest part of the uh, course, which is coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's a little, um, uh, because I, I uh, like uh, plants and I like botany, I put in a couple of uh, articles and uh, uh, one of them is uh, about uh, how many plants there are on, the, uh, on Earth and I, I thought it was interesting and you get an idea of the biodiversity that's out there. Now that doesn't include all of the uh, cultivars and varieties that people have developed as crops and as uh, 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 ornamental uh, species for gardens and, 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 and such. Uh, so when you take a, a think about that, there is a lot of, uh, a lot to learn and a lot of different uh, plants and uses for plants that is the world of horticultural. You'll never know it all, but I always find it helpful to get my arms around the, the magnitude of a uh, problem before I dig in and try to understand it. Uh, then there's also, um, these are totally optional videos. There's a little uh, uh, brief video on YouTube from the USDA and then a student production uh, called A Career in Horticulture. Uh, and, and these are totally optional, as I said, um, and, but I want you to get uh, comfortable if you're not already in going out and uh, getting uh, information from YouTube. There is just a whole world of useful information out there and we'll be um, linking out to YouTube throughout the class. Outcomes for this unit uh, are for you to be able to get a feel and describe the branches of horticulture in relation to other plant science, um, to explain and provide examples of not just the um, botanical plant classification system, uh, but others. And uh, 
your um, discussion will be to choose one of those classification systems and describe, uh, describe it. And then um, your assignment um, will be to uh, take some steps to align your current skills and interest interests uh, with opportunities in the green industry or uh, horticulture. So here are, in, in a couple of uh, graphics, uh, the, the world of plants. So um, plant science includes things such as botany and uh, other things, but applied plant science uh, is basically broken down into three areas. Uh, agriculture, uh, which is the production of uh, uh, crops, grains, uh, and, and uh, large-scale um, um, agriculture. Horticulture, uh, which is generally includes the non-commodity uh, uh, products, uh, vegetables, fruits, and forestry which is the science of managing uh, uh, forests, both for timber and for um, uh, uh, natural and ecological purposes. So um, horticulture feeds us and enriches our environment through landscape, architecture, and ornamental plants. Uh, horticulture comes from Latin hortus, garden, and cultura, cultivation. And then within the field of horticulture, this other chart, um, there's some convenient breakdowns. Uh, horticulture involves food production, fruit and vegetables. It involves uh, beautifying and, and protecting the landscape uh, and also includes producing uh, plants and uh, designing uh, uh, displays of plants for ornamental purposes. So just to give you this chart is just intended to give you a feel for the uh, areas in which horticulturalists operate and some of the breakdowns between um, horticulture and related fields. Why is horticulture important? Well, produces a lot of the food that we eat, fruit, vegetables, and nuts. Um, we, our diet would be poor and um, boring without these, uh, that provides uh, beautiful plants and ornamentation of our landscapes and interior spaces in the buildings and homes where we live and work. And it also provides a lot of jobs. And, and some examples of jobs in horticulture include growing, uh, farming, greenhouses and nurseries. Uh, includes uh, landscapes and uh, the floral industry suppliers and customers to these uh, and other industries and a lot of indirect jobs in um, marketing, advertising, uh, uh, science, research, and teaching, such as what I'm doing right now. It's not a full-time gig, but I enjoy talking about um, horticulture. So some of the big trends that are uh, going on in horticulture uh, uh, relate to um, recognition that humans have uh, had huge impacts on uh, the planet and the environment and um, forming new relationships between plants and people, both to improve the environment and to um, improve our diets and the, and the way we uh, we interact and purchase and consume our food. So some of the uh, small-scale trends going on include urban farming. Uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, example of that nearby at Prairie Crossing where um, uh, community-supported agriculture and farmers markets are going on. Uh, many of our larger cities have community gardens uh, where folks can come in and raise their own food. In fact, CLC has a community garden at the Grays Lake campus. Um, there's increasing interest in home gardens and uh, things such as uh, hydroponics and aquaponics and vertical gardening. So there's lots of, uh, uh, of interest in people uh, 
a lot of this uh, occurs on a hobby level, but other people are um, developing these ideas and trying to increase the amount of uh, local and sustainable um, food production. Then in our uh, uh, lawns, gardens, and uh, uh, natural areas, forest preserves, parks, uh, there's increased emphasis going into use of native plantings, uh, uh, energy efficient or lead buildings, uh, which uh, frequently use uh, uh, plants as a part of the uh, uh, ways of dealing with uh, 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 excess water and uh, excessive use of energy. So um, there's quite a bit going on and we'll have a lesson later on in the class uh, about uh, sustainable landscapes. And then uh, there's another whole field uh, called horticultural uh, therapy, uh, which uses plants uh, to uh, help people um, slow down, relax, and uh, uh, try to recover from serious conditions such as attention deficit and um, strokes and other things. So. Uh, we won't get into extreme uh, detail on any of these, but you'll be exposed to these uh, areas and opportunities, maybe help you develop an interest or a hobby you already have, uh, identify career opportunities, and uh, hopefully have some fun and learn some things. Then on a large scale, there is a tremendous amount of influence uh, uh, in our global markets. Uh, you can buy flowers, fruit, vegetables, and ornamental plants year-round from around the world. Um, and it does create a, an interesting and exciting opportunity at our um, stores and um, markets to be able to access uh, plants and, and plant products from around the world. Uh, agribusiness is continuously making uh, uh, horticulture uh, more productive uh, and that involves uh, a lot of uh, things with um, positive aspects to um, feeding a hungry planet of seven billion people um, but also presents some uh, concerns and red flags to others about uh, uh, consequences of industrial farming, uh, use of genetically modified organisms and other um, technology applications such as use of plastic culture and tissue culture um, to provide ever uh, more efficient and uh, profitable uh, enterprises. So along with small scale, um, the large scale uh, developments in horticulture are also proceeding very, very rapidly. So. Your first assignment is described here. It's a career search. Um, the first step is to go out and to search for horticultural related jobs on the internet. Uh, one job board you can try is uh, called Jobs in Horticulture and there's a link here. Um, but the specific assignment to be completed uh, and submitted by September 7th is to first create a list of uh, five current job openings. One of them uh, that you might be interested in now or in the future and to um, identify gaps between the requirements in the job and your current skills. So um, I, I have a little uh, proposed chart that you can use to complete this part of the assignment, um, but it is to get you thinking about uh, careers, uh, where you stand right now, and uh, what you might need to do um, to pursue a uh, career interest in the future. Next, um, if, if the um, job opening uh, for the, for that you're interested in, if that organization has a website, uh, go to that one. But if, if not, uh, visit one green company website and report as follows. Uh, where are they? What do they do? How big are they? What job openings are posted there? and why do you think it might be or might not be a good place to work. So if you need uh, more referrals to green companies, um, I think there's some links uh, 
uh, in a subsequent slide, but if not, I'll post some out there for you. And then uh, to submit this um, list uh, of job openings, gaps, and employers, not Blackboard, but Enter, um, and not February 2nd, but September 7th. I see I still have a few uh, kinks to work out in my uh, uh, PowerPoints from last, uh, uh, last term, and I apologize. I'll do a better job of proofreading these as I go forward. But the information on Enter is correct, and uh, this assignment is also posted there. So for the gap uh, analysis, here's a little uh, chart. I, I created this in uh, Excel, uh, but you can do this in a Word table uh, or just um, informally. But it, it does provide a, uh, a way of thinking about and comparing uh, your own experience um, with uh, uh, the requirements of a job and then um, identifying the uh, steps or the things that you need to do, and, it, and this could be over a long term, to um, close the gap between your current situation and the place you want to be. So again, even if you're not interested in a career in horticulture, um, most everybody has to work and most everybody in today's world has to think about uh, preparing for a, a first job or a next job and uh, having a way of thinking about and planning uh, uh, steps for the future. So I hope even if you're not a career horticulturalist that you might get something out of this, uh, out of this assignment. So finally, uh, we're ready to talk about horticulture and talk about, uh, um, in this case, um, this part of the lesson, uh, we'll be talking about plant taxonomy and plant nomenclature. Uh, now this happens to be my favorite statue in the entire world. This is uh, Carolus Linnaeus at the uh, Botanic Garden um, at, in, in Northbrook. Um, and uh, as a child I was a uh, nature lover. I always went out and uh, uh, looked at plants and trees and you couldn't see me without my butterfly net catching insects and frogs and snakes and stuff. So this interest has continued and finally after a career in financial services uh, I'm free and, and, and I can produce, follow my, my dreams of uh, being Linnaeus and uh, growing plants and spending my time out in nature. So this uh, is meaningful to me uh, and uh, I hope you go visit the Botanic Garden if you haven't already been there and say hi to Careless Linnaeus for me when you do. Here are some of the key terms and concepts involved in uh, uh, plant uh, classification. Uh, we'll get into them as we go through the lecture. So first, what is a plant? Well, what you need to know uh, is that plants, even domesticated and ornamental plants, all come from nature. And there are uh, now known about 450,000 plant species around the world, plus many cultivars or plants that have been modified by humans through breeding and um, so it's a big universe of plants. However, uh, man has chosen a relative few of them to uh, use as horticultural plants and um, some people have uh, proposed the, the, the um, outrageous idea that these plants have chosen us and uh, it's because corn has chosen us that uh, we grow it almost everywhere around the world and, and uh, rice is uh, forms uh, almost a third of the diet of the humans on the planet and wheat is um, used for bread in on every continent. So um, have those plants chosen us or have we um, as humans uh, focused our energy on molding them and their um, uh, characteristics uh, around our needs. Uh, I, I'd propose that it's a little bit of both probably. In any event, all of uh, the things we'll be talking about on plants um, can be understood um, if you remember that they their mission in life is to transport, transform light into chemical energy 
and then into food, uh, all of the time being anchored in one place and focusing their um, energy and their anatomy on capturing sunlight to do so. Plants don't need to move or have sophisticated nervous systems such as animals to um, in order to find food because they make their own. Um, but that said, um, they're not boring. Uh, and by just sitting there and doing nothing, uh, they're really pretty amazing organisms. And um, I hope to communicate to you some of my awe and wonder about plants and certainly a lot of information about how plants can be uh, used and manipulated and enjoyed by people uh, with a little bit of horticultural expertise. Plants are classified um, according to their characteristics. And one way of looking at their characteristics is through their evolutionary processes. So plants are um, more than a billion years old on this planet and the earliest plants were uh, algae and single-celled uh, organisms and over the um, millions of years they evolved into more and more sophisticated forms. But a breakthrough occurred uh, with uh, the um, vascular plants and a vascular system means that they have phloem and xylem to move water and nutrients up into the plant from the roots and um, plant sugars formed by photosynthesis back down uh, throughout the plant. And the examples uh, that we will be most interested in for horticultural purposes of vascular plants include uh, the ferns um, and the seed plants, um, the conifers and the flowering plants. So this is really uh, just a way of uh, identifying both uh, the criteria, the type of criteria that are used to classify plants, plus the most important categories of plants uh, that we will be working with as horticulturalists. And um, the key classifications of those seed plants are gymnosperms, which are the conifers, and angiosperms, which are the flowering plants. And then among the flowering plants are the additional subdivision of the um, monocots, which are the grasses and lilies and things, and dicots, which are the rest of the uh, flowering plants, the um, asters, the um, legumes, and most of the um, uh, plants that we use in, in horticulture are in those two categories. More about this later. So here he is, uh, once again, Linnaeus, eagerly reaching toward the plants in his path with a collector's enthusiasm. Um, lived in the 1700s, uh, but was a huge figure and really uh, made uh, many contributions. Uh, but his most important and enduring contribution was establishing uh, the use of Latin and the binomial nomenclature, the use of a uh, Latin term for the genus and the species of each plant. So now we have over 450,000 plants classified classified according to his system, and it stood up very well. It stood up to the test of time uh, for plants and animals uh, um, for over 200 years. So uh, scien common and scientific names are uh, out there for uh, every plant, um, and horticulturalists need to know how to name and classify plants uh, but there's so many different reasons and, and uses for these names. So common names, tomato, white pine, for example, are widely used, but they're imprecise and they can cause confusion and misunderstanding. Um, sometimes uh, the same name can be used for different plants, and sometimes the same plant has multiple different common names. 
So there needs to be a better system. And here it is, scientific um, taxonomy. So this is the Linnaean system, and it starts out with kingdom, division, um, each at each level becoming more uh, specific and uh, including uh, a smaller group of related um, organisms. Finally, getting down to the genus, uh, which is a small group of closely related plants. Uh, genus is the first part of the Latin name. And then uh, species, which is the second part of the Latin name, describes a specific um, uh, organism, a plant or an animal that cannot uh, easily interbreed uh, and is uh, uh, evolutionarily distinct from every other uh, uh, every other species. Um, and these are called taxons. At, uh, so every different plant is uh, called a, a, a taxa and collectively um, refer to um, different plants or different um, species as taxa. But it goes one step below that. And, and this is where horticulture, um, plant breeding, and um, a lot of the work that um, um, horticulturists do occurs at the level of subspecies variety or cultivar. So plant breeding takes species, uh, crossbreeds them, um, and forms uh, different varieties or cultivars with uh, desired uh, characteristics. And we'll get into this uh, in subsequent lessons. But I did want to introduce you to these, uh, to these words, to these ideas, um, because um, in order to talk about plants, you need to not understand um, that a, uh, uh, every plant that we look at is a species. And some of those species have been um, um, developed over time into specific horticultural varieties or cultivars. And there are um, specific ways of talking about them. And I'm going to give you an example in the next slide. So this plant that we're looking at here is a uh, multiflora rose. This is a plant uh, that is of interest to me mostly because it is, has been widely used uh, in the United States, even though it originated in, in, in Eurasia. It's been widely used as a um, uh, plant for um, living fences, erosion control, and uh, up until recent years as a rootstock, rootstock for grafted roses. In other words, um, the roses that we see um, and purchase at the um, at, at the nursery or at a, uh, a garden center uh, frequently are grafted onto the uh, roots of this uh, multiflora rose. The problem is that it has become highly invasive in the Midwest and large areas of our natural lands, forest preserves, and other areas have become totally overgrown with this uh, invasive and obnoxious plant. So it's an interesting one. And this picture is of a cultivar of multiflora rose that was developed and is um, grown um, in gardens um, around the world. It's not a real common cultivar, but it is out there. And I received uh, permission from uh, a woman in Connecticut to use her photograph of this plant. In any event, going down the, the line here, um, this multiflora rose belongs to the plant kingdom, um, is a um, vascular plant that is in the flowering plant and dicot uh, division and class. Um, it's in a grouping of um, rose plants, and the next three levels, order, family, and genus, are more specific classifications of plants that are related to the roses. And then uh, uh, the, the, the species is multiflora. So the Latin happens to uh, correspond with the um, English, and uh, the common name is virtually identical to the scientific name, uh, Rosa multiflora.
So here is your first uh, name to memorize. Multiflora rose is has the scientific name Rosa multiflora. But in addition, it is a cultivar uh, multiflora Dawson, and the common name is Dawson rose. So that's an example of working down from uh, through this cla classification system and how a common name relates to the scientific name. However, uh, we're going to get around to the discussion soon, and there are many other ways of classifying plants that are useful to horticulturalists. Uh, they can be, and you're probably very familiar with some of these. So um, plants can be classified based on their life cycle. There are annuals, biannuals, perennials, and a thing called monocarps. Um, you'll have to research that on your own in the textbook if you want to understand what a monocarp is. Uh, it can be based on stem type. Herbaceous plants uh, tend to be uh, annuals that uh, end their life cycle or uh, perennials that die back uh, and form new tissue every growing season. The alternative stem type is woody, and those are plants whose stems persist from years to year to year. Um, the most common and obvious form of uh, woody plants are shrubs and trees. Another classification system is growth form. Uh, some examples of that are erect, others are decumbent, creeping, climbing. These are terms that are used to describe uh, how plants look and how they, um, uh, how they stand uh, and how you can find them when you're trying to locate a plant. Um, another uh, classification criterion is the number of cotyledons. Those are the earliest um, sprouts that you can see uh, when a plant germinates. And there's two varieties there. One is the monocots that includes the grasses and the lilies, uh, um, the orchids, as I mentioned earlier, and the dicots. Those are plants with two cotyledons and include um, most of the um, plants that we are familiar with. Other classification systems go to the cold or heat tolerance of plants, um, their edible parts, or their foliage. And uh, so I urge you to um, think about these and um, look at the material in the text uh, that describes some of these classification systems. Uh, in the Linnaean system, uh, flowers are um, most important to classifying um, plants. Excuse me, I need to take a drink. There, I get my voice back. Um, and um, we are going to spend uh, a lot of time next week uh, taking a deep dive into plant anatomy. Uh, you'll be dissecting and drawing um, uh, flowers and other plant parts. Uh, but mainly I just wanted to uh, start the discussion right now and show you a dissected uh, lily. So this is a, a very common plant and uh, it, the cross-sectional uh, dissection view here includes the female parts relating to the ovary of the plant the male parts, uh, uh, the stamen and the, and the pistil, uh, the anther, I'm sorry, the stamen and the anther, and then the um, petals and sepals of the plant. Um, th this is the most um, basic um, uh, anatomy, plant anatomy. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it as basic as possible, but it is important for you to have um, the um, basic terminology not only to classify plants, but to describe their parts. And I think the best way to learn these parts is to um, um, draw them and to label them and to uh, make up flashcards so that you can um, um, practice and use them. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. I just wanted to give you a sneak preview. But for this week, here's your discussion question. 
And your answers are due by um, September 4th and your replies to your classmates post by September 7th. Other than Linnaeus's uh, binomial nomenclature based on Latin, describe one system for classifying plants. I've already given you several. And then uh, also add to your post why that system is useful. So um, there you go. That's your um, uh, first lesson and your first uh, discussion and your first assignment. Uh, good luck. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, I'll look forward to seeing your work.